go. One thing I do want to make sure that I note here, I do have one pin at dead center. I didn't have any notch on the placket when I folded it over, so it wasn't like I was matching a notch to center like I did before. But I do want to make sure that I've got a pin right here at that pivot point um, at the center where, um, where the middle of the placket is. So now the whole thing is pinned like this, and it looks something like this on the right side. Let's go back over to the machine. You've got a choice when you go to stitch this. Some people like to do what's called stitching in the ditch. If you take a look right here, you can see that there's a small ditch that's created from where this piece and this piece are stitched together along that seam. <clears throat> Actually, I want to backtrack for a sec. Sometimes people, um, your first option here is actually not to machine sew at all. You can slip stitch this entire thing closed, which is a good, accurate way, uh, an invisible way uh, of closing up the placket. I don't particularly like it because I don't find it as tight. Um, I like to do it by machine and it's faster. So first of all, you've got the option of stitching in the ditch like I was talking about. So what I'm doing is I'm aiming the needle and the notch of the foot right here in between the two pieces. I do start with my back stitch again. I will tell you, um, as I sew, you can see that I'm using my hands to sort of pull the whole thing apart to try and create a little bit more of a negative space between the two. And then as I let go, it relaxes and rolls over top. I will tell you that I suck at this. Um, and it generally pisses me off. And so I tend to not do, almost ever do stitch in the ditch. Why? Because there are, there are two reasons that I think I suck at this. The first thing is, this, I'm actually not watching over here, like I tell you to do with other stitching. I'm watching my actual needle to make sure that it's hitting that ditch. Um, I would probably want to switch over to one of the feet that has a bigger window in it so I could see a little bit better. Because I don't like the fact that I can't really see very well to be able to know if I'm going to hit that ditch. The other thing I hate is <clears throat> I got 24 inches of plaque in here, right? Well, there we go. I just missed one stitch. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like I've got to start over. Because even, even though I can start over right there, I, I just personally, for my aesthetic, I don't like the way it looks when I start over or when I have two lines of sewing overlapping each other because then they start to be bigger than the ditch. So what I tend to do is I do all of mine as an edge stitch. So you can see instead what I've shifted over to do is I'm matching the little groove right here, the edge of the groove with the ditch so that I'm ending up doing an edge stitch this way. So you just move it over a tiny bit. Yep. Okay. And you could, you know, I do it by eye. You could do it by changing your needle position or whatever makes the most sense to you. Um, I just find this easier for me to execute. In the long run, I don't care how you execute it for you. What I care about is that it looks uniform. And in a minute, you'll see that even with the edge stitch, it does, uh, um, it does become invisible from the right side. And so as long as it's invisible, I don't really care. All right, so then I've stitched off the other end. What's most important here, no matter whether you're doing the stitch in the ditch or an edge stitch, you've got to go over here and double check to make sure that you've actually caught this. This is part of the reason that we made sure that when we pinned that we weren't putting one line directly on top of the other, but instead we're pushing it slightly to the side um, so that we can ensure that we've got fabric to actually grab in this line of sewing. Um, it's really frustrating a lot of times you'll do this whole line, flip it over and see that you haven't caught big chunks of it. And that's why the stitch in the ditch is so hard, because you're barely getting the edge, right? Well, that's, that I also think is the case. Brenda's really good at stitch in the ditch, so I think it, it, you know, it just totally depends on sort of how your brain works. Now I can get rid of the pins. I'm going to go ahead and 
Um, Chris, I want you to come over to the ironing table. So the first thing you can see that I'm going to do, just like usual, is press the whole thing flat to try and get it all to relax together. I am trying to be gentle around the center point there to make sure that I don't accidentally mash any of that flat. I'm now turning this and putting it back into its original orientation like that, right? This was the neckline. This is the bust line right here of the shirt. You can see that it is continuous. At the moment, however, it doesn't really lap on itself because it all sticks out, right? So now it's time to define the overlap versus the underlap. Um, the overlap, of course, is the one that does this, and the underlap is the one that does this. So, based on my garment holding this thing up like this, I want this to do that. Right? Based on our research, we want it to lap towards the outseam. So that tells me that this side is the overlap and this side is the underlap, correct? Mm -hmm. That becomes important because now, and I'm still holding it the way it's supposed to be, I take it back to the iron. I fold the overlap side in place like so, and I press to get the overlap side to relax backward. I then take the underlap side and I lay it on top of itself. So now and we do actually have an overlap and an underlap. Oh my gosh. And the last step, which that is, is also perfect. crucial, is then press right here. Whoa. Where it stops being underlap and starts being overlap. Wow. If you don't put that line of sewing right there, the placket itself is gonna fight everything. And so as a result, we've got to be able to get it pressed in that orientation, otherwise it's not going to lay flat. So That's the way you've just pressed that, um, the fashion fabric is on top, are we doing anything, um, are we adding any applique to make this placket decorative? All the, all the decorative stuff happens um, well after the fact, that'll all happen next year. And even um, and even uh, if, if we were doing the show tomorrow, we still would add it on afterwards. Sure. It may not have been done that way when these real things were made, but certainly for the purposes of theater, we want to be able to put it on on top because yeah. we want to be able to change it later. Yeah. Okay, one of the things we talked about, we've got a giant stress point right there, right? Yeah. Because we've got that one thread and in fact, I said I almost created a hole right there. So our very last step Second to last step is to reinforce that point. With the whole thing laying on the table like this, I do this. So that the whole thing's laying flat. I want two pins to hold the placket shut like so. And then I do what Brenda and I refer to as the miter at the bottom of the placket. I'm going to sew a line that starts right at my clip point right here that's roughly on a 45 degree angle and goes to there. There's a back stitch in both places. This serves a couple of different purposes. First purpose, which is the most important, is it reinforces that stress point. Just looks like that. Ooh, should have held on to my threads. Look at all your bobbin on. Second thing it does is it actually distributes that stress all along this line. So if there is a quick change, for example, and somebody does this, the stress is not just at that point, but it's all along this edge. Um, the physics of that starts to become super important. The thing I want you to notice here, I did not start my line of sewing over here mm -hmm. where the folded edge is. I started it here at this line of sewing. Why? So you don't accidentally sew it like that to your fabric. So you can still manipulate it around. Kind of. Keep going. You still need that corner as a pivot point. 
<clears throat> where's my actual clip point in my original stay stitch? It's here. It's not over there. If I make the mistake of stitching all the way over to here, I'm get, gonna get a little pleaty, pleaty thing. So then, back to the ironing table, press it again. <coughs> Notice I'm just pressing the corner. I'm not pressing anything else. Then I put it back in its original orientation, or its final orientation, depending upon how you choose to look at it, and pressing it again. The last thing that I'm gonna do for my own edification is I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna do a line of flat lining that just holds my overlap in place up here. So I'll do a line of sewing right there to keep this from being able to flip out like that. Why? Two reasons. First of all, so I don't get confused later um, and accidentally turn that into the underlap and turn that into the overlap. Um, we had this happen a lot on Tartuffe, mm -hmm. actually, uh, in, breaches, um, in breaches for the men. Um, and actually it happened a couple times in the skirt as well. So being able to establish exactly what the overlap is so that it can't get confused is always a good thing. Um, and then I'm ready to move on. Part of the reason that I had said was cut your pieces. Part of the reason I had said cut your pieces but don't assemble is being able to do all of this in the front by itself is way easier than trying to do it once the shirt has been assembled. Yeah. You guys can decide if you've already done side seams and um, shoulder seams, how much you want to disassemble. I will tell you in the long run, there are two other issues you're going to come upon. The first thing is, all those seam allowances have to be overlocked. So that would be easier to do after the pieces are cut and before the assembly happens. The second thing is, the side seam actually doesn't get assembled until after the sleeve is installed uh, for this shirt. So those definitely have to come out later anyway. So, um, <clears throat> you know, so you can decide how far you want to backtrack. Sure. If you've already got your side seams in place, you can put the sleeves in. You're going to have to undo a little bit of it for later, but you can decide how far you want to go. What do you want for Wednesday? Now, Mary asked two questions. What do you want for Wednesday, which I'll answer in a minute. It, uh, but earlier she asked interfacing. How much, what, do you want interfacing in your placket, and if so, how much? I don't want you to put any interfacing. Your fabric is pretty chunky to begin with, um, and especially by the time we put trim and stuff on top of it, um, it's going to get even chunkier. So I don't think that we need any interfacing in your placket. Um, I want to touch your fabric real quick. You may cut yours four inches wide instead of three inches wide. A lot of times what Brenda does is she doesn't put interfacing in. You can see my seam allowance, my half inch seam allowance right there. She cuts it so that there's an inch of seam allowance. And so that then you end up with four layers of fashion fabric inside your placket. And to her, that's enough interfacing um, by taking advantage of the seam allowance. I want to touch your fabric just to see if I agree with that idea first. For Wednesday, you should have your placket completely installed. I should have approved your sleeve pattern so that your sleeves are cut. <clears throat> and we should look at your collar. I'm not as concerned about having the collar cut at the moment. Uh, I'm more concerned about sleeves. Because you will have a complete shirt as of next Monday. Is it out of muslin or the real fabric? Real fabric. Oh my God. Sorry, what was that Wednesday? Placket in our, in our Wednesday, garment? placket installed. In garment, okay. Yeah, and let's say shoulders in place as well. Shoulder okay. seems done. So that means that everything has to be overlooked. And you said paper will get here today? It should. Okay. If not, we're going to send somebody to get paper. Cool. Okay. Are we done? So again, samples. Don't jump into your real fabric. Sample, sample, samples out of muslin first. Okay a couple of times. Let Brenda or I take a look and work with you on your samples as you go um, before you dive into the real fabric. The last thing you want to do is chop into the front of the shirt and then realize that you you've wrong. made some sort of error. That's a pain in the butt. It's not paper, you can't just tape it back on. It's true. I will hang this on the wall. What was the...